Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to see the VAT polymerization process or more commonly called as stereolithography type of 3D printing technique. So this is basically a photopolymerization process. Now what is that? Basically it makes use of a liquid or radiation curable resins or called as photopolymers as their primary materials. Now as the name suggests radiation curable resins are the ones that are cured when they are struck by certain radiations. So what are photopolymers? Photopolymers are basically liquids or resins that react to the radiations. Liquids or resins that react to the presence of radiations. So, upon irradiation, these materials tend to solidify by undergoing certain chemical reactions. and solidify. So this process is called as photopolymerization. This solidification of a polymer or a photopolymer in presence of radiation is called photopolymerization. As the name suggests photo refers to photons as well. So this basically occurs in presence of either UV light or visible light more commonly in presence of these two type of radiations more commonly these type of reactions take place so okay so these are used in various commercial areas more notably in the coating and printing industries coating and printing industry also in dentistry so these photopolymers are required like for example in dent dentistry these photopolymers are required to seal the top surface of the teeth to fill in deep grooves and prevent cavities. Now what are the type of lasers that are used to cure commercial photopolymers? Majorly almost all kind of lasers can be used say gamma rays, x-rays, electron beams, ultraviolet rays and visible light. But ultraviolet rays and visible lights are more commonly used and commercially being applied. Exploration of gamma rays, x-rays and electron beam to cure photopolymers is still limited. Now, what are the different types of polymers that can be used? So, there are linear polymers that are in the form of just simple long chains like this. Next are branched polymers that have a single chain along with branches coming out of it. And the last is the cross-linked polymers. So there are multiple chains linked together via 
polymer bridges or another polymeric chains like these two single chains they are connected together using various other polymeric branches okay now why to see different types of polymers so the linear polymers or branch molecular uh, branch molecules type of polymers they can melt and resolidify melt and resolidify okay these are thermoplastics so they can be used repeatedly like cast over again and again but wet polymerization polymers are cross linked these are used for wet polymerization so once they solidify they cannot be remelt they do not melt and have much less much less creep and stress relaxations okay so this cross link type of structure is what is majorly used in our case of wet photopolymerization now let us check the chemistry of these photopolymers so they have a photo initiator okay so what does this photo initiator do it basically forms free radical or cations cationic uh, radical to react with a monomer and form polymer chains reactive dilutants they are used to lower down the viscosity of the polymer during processing for easing the process flexibilizers these are used to impart flexibility to otherwise hard and rigid plastic okay so every ingredient has its own role so stabilizers they are used to ensure that polymer isn't affected much by the ambient or the environmental conditions or there is no mechanical degradation thermal degradation to ensure that there is no degradation of the polymer then there are liquid monomers this is the major component okay this is basically the main ingredient or the main component that leads to the formation of cross linked polymeric chains so it is this liquid monomer that is a polymer and this photo initiator allows or enables this liquid monomers to join together to form a complete polymeric network let us see them in some more detail so there is a photo initiator as soon as it is radiated by some uv radiation it becomes reactive okay so it becomes reactive reactive as in 
either it forms a free radical or undergoes cationic polymerization. So this reactive photo initiator then combines with a liquid monomer that is a single unit. Mono means one. So one unit of the polymer of one molecule and they continue to join and form polymeric chains. So this polymerization takes place through two mechanisms that is one is free radical that is more common in acrylate. Another is cationic polymerization that is more common in epoxies and vinyl ethers type of photopolymers. So how does photopolymerization takes place? Okay. So this PI is a photo initiator. Okay. Photo initiator. Then as it is hit by UV radiation or visible light as per its characteristics it decomposes to form a free radical. Okay. Now this free radical reacts with a monomer and forms a compound that is chain that is a photo initiator and a monomer. This is what is termed as initiation of formation of polymeric chain. Initiation of formation of polymeric chains. Next, then it also has a free radical here. So this goes on to combine with other monomers to form long chains and this is what is termed as propagation till this process continues. Okay, then at some point of time it is necessary for this process to terminate as well. Okay, so two, uh, these two free radicals such type of two free radicals which join together to form the final polymer chain. Okay. So this is how a polymerization reaction goes. Similar is the cationic polymerization. Okay. Same broad structure as uh, is followed by cationic polymerization as by free radical polymerization. The only difference is the photo initiator generates a cation instead of a free radical. That is an ion with some positive charge. Okay, then that cation reacts with the monomer to initiate the formation and that further reacts to propagate and ultimately two cations join together to terminate the reaction. Let us go how the resins are formulated and the different reaction mechanisms. Basic raw materials such as polyols, epoxides such as polyols, epoxides, acrylic acids, and their esters. are used to produce monomers and oligomers for reaction curing. Okay. So, what are uh, monomers and what are uh, oligomers the spelling goes wrong so monomers are single unit 
of the polymer whereas oligomers have certain few repeating units certain few repeating units of the monomer obviously less than the polymer okay so monomers are usually polyacrylates that gives cross linking polymerization polyacrylates whereas the family of oligomers consists of epoxy acrylates urethane acrylates amino acrylates etc okay resin suppliers usually use re, create ready to use formulations that are formed by mixing oligomers and monomers with the proto initiator and the other ingredient as were discussed above okay so but actually photosynthesizers are often used in combination with the photo initiator to shift the absorption towards longer wavelength okay so resin is composed of basically mixture of different types of photo initiators okay and uh, photo initiators photo sen sensitizers monomers oligomers and other ingredients as discussed above okay for stabilizing or to improve the formulation these are to improve the overall formulation and its properties now what is a photo initiator system basically the main role of a photo initiator is to convert the physical energy of the incident light that is being irradiated upon the photopolymer that is uv rays or visible light more commonly as used into chemical energy okay chemical energy as in free radicals cations etc to form reactive intermediates these all are reactive intermediates that is they are not stable forms they tend to undergo certain reactions to stabilize themselves okay so what are the main properties like of a photo initiator it should have strong absorption characteristics so that it is effectively able to absorb all the energy or a majority of the energy that is incident upon it right and where the strong absorption should be at the laser emission wavelength whatever the laser is at the wavelength that it is emitting at that wavelength it should have exhibit strong absorption characteristics and after absorbing it should undergo a fast photolysis photolysis as the name suggests photo plus lysis so photo is in the presence of photon or light and lysis is breaking off so breaking off to form red, radical or cationic species in the pre, uh, in the presence of photons is photolysis and these radicals or cationic species act as 
initiating species for formation of polymeric chains so they initiate the radical polymerization or the cationic polymerization okay now let us check the monomer formulations so these monomers and its formulations they are basically patented by the manufacturers and its information it's not shared otherwise so different types of combinations of acrylates and epoxies are used okay so this open kind of a structure is for an acrylate whereas epoxy has a kind of more ring like structure right okay so these are more common cationic photopolymers whereas acrylates are more common free radical polymers okay now interpenetrating photopolymer formulation so after these reactions we get an interpenetrating photopolymer formulation network which is like as was mentioned multiple chains of a polymer linked together via other chains and having high strength okay so this can be defined as a combination of two polymers in a network form two polymers in a network form out of which out of which at least one is synthesized or cross linked in the immediate presence of other okay that therefore it is a special class of polymer in which both the polymers are in network form okay now let us see uv curable polymers they are more usually combination of epoxides with some acrylate content so both of them have certain benefits and disadvantages okay so let us see all of them one by one so for epoxides the major advantage of using epoxides in the formulations are their low shrinkage rates that is 1 to 2% whereas acrylate content have excessive shrinkage of 5 to 20% epoxides have excellent adhesion properties and reduce tendency for flexible substrates to curl so when the substrates are flexible uh for epoxides they do not curl that much okay and photopolymer uh, photopolymerization of epoxides is not inhibited by the presence of atmospheric oxygen okay whereas this is a disadvantage in case of acrylates but acrylates are harder and they are required to add strength to the belt part epoxides otherwise do not have such high strengths and 
also it reduces the brittleness of epoxy being flexible it reduces the brittleness of epoxy the disadvantages of epoxides are because of which we need to add certain acrylate content is the low photo speeds okay that is low rate of uh, photo polymer uh, photo polymerization or photo initiation and the brittleness of the cured parts the parts that are cured are that are made out of epoxide they are inherently brittle and it is sensitive to humidity in presence of excessive humidity the polymerization reaction can be inhibited okay so now let us move to the different configurations of the wax polymerization process or the different techniques that are used to perform 3d printing using wax polymerization so the first and foremost is a vector scan this is basically a scanning technique in which the printer bed is scanned in a point wise manner so the laser cures one point after the other okay so this is the basic schematic of a vector scan wet polymerization machine okay the main sub systems include the laser the optics to focus the laser beam the scanning galvanometers the platform the resin tank or the vat the elevator along with the platform resin handling system and a recoated blade okay now typically the process followed is after a layer has been cured when a single layer suppose this layer is cured this platform dips down then a recoated blade applies a smooth layer of resin on the build platform then that layer is cured again and the process continues till the entire object is made okay so let us see what the platform actually consists of so platform consists of a build platform that supports the part being built okay an elevator that helps in lowering and raising the platform so this elevator is actually driven by a lead screw this vat is simply a resin tank that holds the resin this is basically a stock of the resin till the entire process of 3d printing is complete okay now let us see the objects included in the, in the optics the optic system includes a laser this is also included in the optics focusing and adjusting optics this is this is basically the focusing and adjusting optics its main function is to focus the laser beam and adjust it in such a way that it falls at the specified points on the build platform and then there are two scanning galvanometers one for the x direction and other for the y direction these galvanometers ensure that the laser is falling on the proper point as directed by the cad file right okay so usually modern wax polymerization machines use solid state lasers they use solid state lasers because of more stable characteristics okay 
that is than gas lasers okay these have more stable characteristics than gas lasers okay now there is a control system that consists of a process controller now we have a control system that has a process controller which controls the sequence of operation of the machine like which component is to be operated first which to be second okay how the commands are being sent and executed okay next there are certain sensors to detect uh, the raise in height the platform level the position of the laser etc the forces or on the recorder blade and uh, the smoothness with which the recorder blade coats the resin system on the printer bed next is beam controller its function is to control the characteristics of the laser beam so it adjusts adjust laser beam spot size focus depth scan speed and with certain sensors that provide feedback third is the environment controller it basically adjusts the temperature in the resin vat tank depending on the machine model and the humidity because temperature and humidity are important parameters to maintain the viscosity and other properties of the resin so what are the main advantages of vat polymerization over other additive manufacturing technologies main advantage is the surface finish that we can achieve and the part accuracy part accuracy and the surface finish there, there are also micro vector scan vat polymerization machines that can scan that can actually have parts built in the precision of microns it has you they have uv beams of uv beams of size 5 micrometer having positional accuracy up to 0.25 micrometer along x y and z, uh, along x and y and 1 micrometer in the z and 1 micrometer along z okay next is mask projection vat polymerization technique so it basically projects bit maps onto a resin surface to cure one layer at a time so the previous one was a point wise scan whereas mask projection is a layer wise scan so what is the term bitmaps bitmaps is the projection of image of a particular layer so the main advantage of mask projection technique is the speed since it scans entire layer in one go this is much faster than the vector scan because it is a point wise scan so dynamic masks that are used are lcd screens and dmds that are digital micrometer devices okay so basically 
what are these now? Let us look at the schematic. So this is a UV lamp that gives UV light. This is a pinhole. This is collimating lens. This is a filter to filter out the unnecessary radiations. Now this is your DMD that is digital micro mirror device. This is the imaging lens. This is your resin vat or the tank with this the platform or the elevator here your part is being built here say this is your part this is somewhat like this this is your part okay so what is basically a digital micro mirror device basically it is an array of mirrors suppose this is your array of mirrors. Suppose you have a layer in which you have to print two lines separated by certain distance. So here suppose this mirror, this mirror and this mirror and this mirror these three mirrors these turn on rest are off so these mirrors will project this image onto the resin platform where a layer in this fashion will solidify when viewed in 2d so this is a bitmap projection right so the layer, uh, the mirrors corresponding to the layer, corresponding to the image of the layer, turn on and reflect the light that is falling on it. Whereas the mirrors that are off do not participate. Like these rest of the mirrors, they do not participate in reflecting the lights. Only these set participate in projecting the light whereas the rest do not participate and remain off okay so the rest is this is the optics to ensure a parallel and smooth beam, collimated beam of UV light to fall on this digital micro mirror device. And then this imaging lens projects the image that it gets from the DMDs onto the resin platform. And simil in a similar manner, this platform helps in lowering and raising, helps in lowering and raising the printer bed after every layer after every layer okay now next is two photon watt polymerization here, the photo initiator requires two photons, explicitly two photons, to strike it before it decomposes to form a free radical that can initiate polymerization. You see, as discussed, formation of free radical is really very important to initiate the polymerization process. So, these there are photo initiators that requires two photons that requests to be struck by two photons 
so that they can decompose to form free radicals and undergo polymerization and this effect why is it uh, what is the effect of this two photon is that the resolution of this photopolymerization process is greatly increased why is it so because only near the center of the radiate uh, laser only near the center of the laser is the irradiance of the laser high enough okay to provide the photon density that is higher photons in smaller area necessary to ensure that two photons strike the same photo initiator at the same time okay so let us see a schematic so this is a resin tank with a platform here consisting of an elevator and these are the two lasers that strike the resin platform together here the photon density will be really high so that the photo initiator is struck by two photons at the same time okay, and then your part will be solidified let us see the advantages advantages of vac polymerization or stereolithography over other am techniques that is better particulacy of the scale of microns of the order of microns higher surface finish and we have flexibility in terms of machine configurations like we can have point scan or layer scan and size scales from micro scale to literally meso scale that is in mm and we can have high printing speeds especially with the mass projection technique because of curing of single layer in one go Now what are the drawbacks of this process that we have limited chemistry of photopolymers okay like acrylic epoxides with acrylates certain content of acrylates are used as such they lack impact strength and durability as such acrylates are really flexible and epoxides are brittle so we can have a combination but the, still the impact strength and durability is are low and aging uh, is happening because of which mechanical properties are degraded but all in all this vat polymerization or stereolithography is a powerful technique of 3d printing thank you